Dog. We up here at Morty Mansion. It's your Morty boy, Clint Roach. Let me give you a sick ass death metal tour. side of the house. So we got our boy Colin Tarman He's grinding up in here. A lot of the classics up in here. A lot of old school mortuary shows up here. Old Bruxer. But it all started with Chad and Colin. We make our way out here. This is the Morty Boy Sweet. This is the Deluxe. We got the memory foam Morty chilling on the bed. Got some old Mortuous shows, some of my first ones. This was my very first show where three days before. Colin hits me up, wants to recruit me on bass, and I had three days to learn that shit. And I learned five songs in three days. Out from San Jose, all the way, born and raised. Uh, Pleasanton, though, for Clint. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, Mike is from Gilroy originally, but yeah, Chad and I grew up in San Jose. So the, the deep east, man. beginnings. Uh, what year did you start? I think it was in 09. Um, the interim was kind of ending because the uh, drummer didn't want to do it anymore and uh, started a new band, tuned down a little bit lower, and uh, Chad let me borrow all his cymbals and shit and recorded a demo. And yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> Immortalis. Uh, what year did that actually come out? What was the response like? I think it was December of 09 or maybe it was early 2010. Um, it was on Skeleton Plague right after Grave Rituals tape their demo. And uh, Brandon, the owner, or, you know, the guy behind Skeleton Plague, told me to do it well. Oh, this is 
is cool. We got this from Cole Jones. Acts of the Unspeakable Autopsy Postcard. It's pretty cool. It's gotta go up. Bunch of different uh, shows that Mortal Fate played. This is an insert of their beautiful little collage. Really cool. Pieces. A show I tried to set up once. <laughs> The realm was like pretty mortuous. Some artwork from our buddy Vince for a Necrot flyer. It's like a picture that my great grandpa took. It's kind of cool. Uh, the second show I tried to set up, which was supposed to have Andre's band at the time, and uh, Fell through, lacerated, and casket blaster came to play, so it was uh, the realm of the set down on Deadly Remains, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's just like kind of embarrassing, like a promo picture thing that uh, my aunt decided to put together. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Mike with the mortician shirt. So much hair. Uh, keep going. I, uh, so we, we've been around for about 10 years or so. How long? About 10 years, yeah. Wow. 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 Lee. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So Mike, Lee. Mike, when yeah. was your first shave? My first shave? That's probably about 10. 10. I like to shave. I love it. I like to do it all day long. I like so, to take my time. So Barith came out when you were like nine or eight. You had to classify your style of Duffmo. What would you call it? Can you take this one, Mike? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, where do you start I mean, it's I mean, you just, you just uh, you know, just that metal. I mean, it, there's so many things to call things these days. You know, I just like to keep it simple and just, you know, hate to throw around the term old school death metal, but, you know, um, yeah, just, you know, brutal death metal. I don't know. It's confusing stuff metal, you know. So we have a lot of old school influences, that's for sure, you know, like Paradise Lost and even like uh, other bands from other spectrums like Mortation and stuff like that. So it's hard to kind of label um, uh, a certain, you know, time of our doing things a certain way of, or a certain um, name or something. That's just death metal. <laughs> cousin Al and uh, our mutual friend Brian we were like you know just playing music together just like hanging out just being like you know, high school kids like just doing whatever the fuck and like we would all hang out at Brian's house and uh, Colin would come over and we'd all jam in the garage and uh, that's just I think that's kind of where it started like we we all had like the space that we would hang out in, we would just play music together, and then, you know, sure enough, like 
I don't know. Like, I don't know. What is it? Like, Dina Realm is when we, like... Like, you asked me to, like, try and see that's, if I could play any of this stuff. That's right, yeah. So, um, we played around with the idea of Chad playing drums and Bryant playing guitar for Mortuous. And uh, when it was just, you know, that demo that was out, no real members in the band. And then right after that, uh, Daryl came back to me and worked at Bogey's where we used to work at Speed's yeah. place. And he was like, hey, I got some members for your band. And it was going to be Daryl and Cole Jones. And then uh, Daryl was going through something, and then Mike ended up coming through per Cole's request. And it's been that way ever since, and couldn't have it any other way. tricks up your sleeve with some folks from Autopsy. You guys care to elaborate about that? I hear they're friends of more choice. Definitely. Yeah, I Good remember friends. we played uh, with Deceased and Insanity and Grave Hill at the Elbow Room uh, a few years ago. And that was like maybe my third show with Mortuous. And I had a good time. We all felt really great about that set, but I remember getting off stage with Colin and walking through the elbow room and Chris Reifer just walked up to him and was just like, you crushed me like a worm, you know, like, <laughs> and I just remember looking at Colin like, just so, so, it so well. and it, that those words, you know, I'll always remember that, like just seeing that happen, and um, Chris, Chris is a great dude, he's totally a supportive kind of guy, uh, you know, and, and when you look at somebody like that that's such an idol, especially harking back to, like, Scream Bloody Gore, I mean, that's, uh, that's an amazing thing, um, and he was super down, apparently, Colin hit him up, and, yeah, I, I asked him if he would be down at, I think it was California Death Fest, so I had seen like, this violation of like, in the and I had asked him if he would be down to move on out and he was like, Yeah, I think when like we got Chris into the studio, Danny tagged along and Colin just on the spot was like, dude, you want to just do a solo? And he's like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Just laid it down super quick and uh, same with Chris, like they both like tracked everything really quickly. <coughs> Sounds great. There was Good extra approach. shit too that Chris did. Like we had so much, uh, and he was just so down to do it, and that was amazing. You know, he wasn't just like trying to be there to do just like a quick thing and like whatever, hang out. Like he was just like, yeah, give me whatever, I'll do it. And, and, and same with Danny. And like looking at those dudes, uh, I look up to them so highly. Autopsies, of course, one of my favorite bands. If you live in Oakland. You have to, you know, know and respect that history, and for those dudes to deliver how the way they did on the album was amazing.
obstacle you've had to overcome with being mortuous? This question. That's a lot of that's like, question. That's like an <laughs> obstacle in itself. <laughs> I think it, I think it's just something that's like every day, you know, what's gonna happen every day. You don't know what's gonna happen to you, you know. Uh, it's just staying focused on what you need to do. Uh, Taking care of business. Whether that's playing a show that day, whether that's you know taking time to plug your band to support your local scene, uh, other people's bands. Uh, it's it's just keeping up with that day to day. You, you gotta be an active member of your scene, whether that's your band or uh, representing, you know. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. that's uh, set to come out pretty soon with those guys on it. Uh, when is that coming out and who's actually releasing that for you? Um, it comes out on June 22nd, um, North America. Through It's a co-release with Tank Crimes from Oakland and then my new label, Carbonized Records. That's a killer promotional tag team. Uh, you think this is gonna make it it's pretty big time. This is going to make some waves in the underground, right? I mean, I think it's already doing pretty well. Like, Tank Crimes has been a solid supporter of, like, Bay Area, you know, whatever, punk and metal for years now. And just getting to work with Scotty, with Necrot, and just seeing, like, how far we were able to go with the last album. It was just, you know, it was an obvious choice for me when we you know, finished this record, I was like, I want to hit up Scotty, I want to see if he's into it, and sure enough, you know, he, he really liked it, um, and uh, I, you know, mentioned that I was, you know, interested in maybe starting a label, um, in case that, you know, that he wasn't interested or he just couldn't fully, you know, participate in the release, and he was like, hey, look, you know, why don't, why don't we do this, why don't, we co-release it and I'll help you start your label. So like, pretty much I, you know, I wouldn't have a label without the help of Scotty and I'm like eternally grateful for all that, so. Hey, that's a, it sounds like a best case scenario. Oh yeah. yeah. 